class, so Professor Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte. And uh, this is a brief uh, tutorial video that's going to show you how to uh, match a camera in Rhinoceros uh, with an architectural photograph. And the, um, the purpose of this is so that you can model objects in Rhino and match their perspective to the photograph so that you can add them to your photo collage. Um, I have to tell you, it's not a perfect, um, it's not a perfect method. It's not really like mathematically accurate. Um, the best you're going to do is get really close to it. Um, Photoshop is going to help you get the rest of the way there. Um, but basically, this will just help you get the right, um, the right kind of vanishing point um, for your objects, um, and it's just going to get you a lot closer. So you have to do a lot less like photo manipulation. Uh, so start off with a photograph that that you've got um, of your of your site. It's really uh, important to make sure that you, you can make out um, what the vanishing point is. Um, and that means you need like some really good um, sort of like vanishing lines. So I'm looking for lines that I can follow. You know, very, very clear kind of edges of things. If you've got something that's actually like uh, like a rectangle or like a, like a box, if you've got a whole building uh, in there, so much the better. It's going to make it uh, that much easier. Um, you're going to be looking for things that, 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 that give you the clear perspective lines and things that might line up um, on your uh, CAD plans. Um, so for instance, like, you know, this building or maybe this front building here, like I could extrude that, I, I can use that to gauge the distance uh, from the camera to the object. But something like this billboard, which is probably not in your drawings, is probably not something that you have good like measurements for, uh, is not going to be um, so useful. Um, but, you know, this line, like the, the pavement line is really nice in here. Um, I could probably, you know, I guess I could probably find these lines up here. I would not look for this billboard to be any kind of an indicator because it's probably angled. Okay. Um, maybe the side of this building here. Um, but uh, that's what's going to make a, a picture a better candidate uh, for you. So once you got your picture, if you go into Rhinoceros here, I got my Rhino file for Times Square, and it's got my building outlines, and it's got my uh, heights in here, and the heights kind of pop in kind of funny, um, but that's okay, we can read what they are anyway. And, um, you know, judging from where this photograph is taken, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to assume that it's looking in this direction, like this is the Times Times building, um, this is this is the kind of neighboring uh, Times Square 4, you know, like building. So that's going to give you some indication of you know which direction I need to be looking when I when I uh, start my camera. I'm gonna do a couple of things really quick. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, this building footprint uh, here because I know I know that that's actually gonna be um, the building that I'm looking at. I'm gonna use that as my focus because some of these other buildings it's a little bit harder to make out um, what's in the scene. This building is 336.75 uh, feet. And we'll go ahead. And I assume that you've scaled your drawing to the proper scale. Uh, if you've not done that, you can figure. You can find out how to use the measure tool on Google Maps. Something you have to add to your map, um, but you can Google for that. Uh, and then just go ahead and do a, a reference scale. Uh, I I took the front of this building in Google Maps and I and I measured this to scale. It might be off by a foot or two, but. That's not that big of a deal. The main thing is just to get the right proportions. Once you've got that, though, you can go ahead and extrude uh, the surface, and you, you'll actually get a height that uh, that makes sense. So it's 336.75. Okay, and so that's going to be my times building right there at a pretty decent scale. If it goes really, really tall or if it's really, really tiny, you know that your scale is screwed up. Um, this looks roughly proportional to the size of the block, so I feel pretty good about that. Once I've got that, I'm going to turn that off. I actually need to add this to my buildings layer. Um, I want it to be green. Okay, I got that. Okay, then the other thing that I'm going to do, and I'm going to put this on my grid layer, is uh, I'm going to draw um, an underlay. And what I'm going to do, in order to do that, I'm going to use the Manhattan grid as my reference. So I'm just going to draw an angled line, and then I'm going to offset that line some distance, so oh, basically something that's perpendicular, or as close to as, per, as close to perpendicular as possible. There we go. Okay, 
and then I'm just going to lock uh, those two together. Oops. Actually, it's a good idea to lock uh, your layers uh, so you don't accidentally select any buildings or anything like that. And lock those together. Okay, so I've just got a simple surface. And I'm going to go ahead and contour. In both directions here. I'm going to do 20 foot. 20 foot contours. There we go. And I'm going to do this in both directions. Now that's going to give you a nice uh, grid. And then I'm going to go select surface, delete that. I'm going to hide this for now. Select everything that's a, on my grid and group them together. So now I've got one uh, group. Then go ahead and turn my my building back on. Looks like I've got some. There we go. Okay. Um, and then go back to perspective. So now I've got a grid. And I've got a building for reference. I've still got my coordinate plane. Let's turn. Let's go to grid. Let's turn that off and turn off the axes. That way, I'm just looking at my my grid and kind of lined it up with the tower, uh, just to make it easier to reference. Now comes the part where you load the image. If you go on your um, your viewport label or right click, go viewport properties. Oops. Give me a second here. Go to browse, take our image, make sure it's a shell wallpaper. You can show it as grayscale if, you, if you'd like, if that makes it easier for you. Um, and then the lens length, and it's assuming a 35mm lens doesn't give us a lot of options. Um, you can kind of play with this, uh, but I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna assume a 25mm uh, lens for this, uh, lens length for this. And that's going to change the perspective. So you can see the perspective gets changed. Uh, this is the the image that's in our, that's in my viewport, and you can see that no matter what I do, that thing's gonna stay there. Doesn't matter if I zoom or, or pan or anything like that. Okay, so that image is gonna be my base, and I'm gonna use that image, and I'm gonna rotate my my plane, and I'm basically basically gonna try to eyeball by by kind of like manipulating this uh, view so that I get my horizon line to line up. And that I understand, you can see this line right here. I'm gonna to try to get that to match up with with those um, perspective lines as much as I can. So those two things. And I'm gonna actually, if I go to wireframe, I can kind of see my outline here. I can sort of gauge whether that's actually, you know, like becoming the right perspective, um, or if I need to do some adjustments uh, to that. Remember, if I got the camera here, I can adjust the uh, the, the the height of the um, of the target and the height of where the camera is actually located. Um, I can actually look at this here. So, if I go in and I make sure that I've got my camera turned on, so I go set view, sorry, set camera and then show camera, or press or press F6, I can actually see where my camera is located and I can see what it's looking at. Okay, and if I look in the plan view here, and actually if I go into my layers, let's just hide this for right now. You can see where the computer thinks that that, that, that view is being taken from. And that you might be able to, if you know where the shot was taken from, you might be able to use that to, uh, to, sort, of, to sort of help you judge the distance. If you look at this in perspective, you can kind of see these marks on the pavement that don't quite don't quite sync up. I wouldn't worry about that too much, um, only because it just, um, again, this isn't like exactly scientific. I think it's more important to get the right uh, perspective rather than have this photograph exactly match up all the lines that you have in your in your file. It's practically never going to happen. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty tough to do. Another thing you can do too is make a copy of this vertical copy. Here's the D option, and um, so you can see that, you can see these lines here starting to converge. So this is like fairly close. If I'm if I'm using my grid, 
if I'm thinking about where my vanishing point is and thinking about the scale, go, go ahead and hide this, the scale of this building here. Let me just kind of play with it a little bit. Another thing you can do too is you can load up the the walkabout toolbar if you don't have it. You can go into the gear here, say show toolbar. Go to um, show toolbar and then you can find the uh, walkabout. And then once you've got that toolbar, you can just drag it into your thing here. It shows up. A reason I've got more than one now, but okay, whatever. Then you can go in and you can change the step size. And I have it pretty small, I have it 001. Then what you can do is if you if you want to just increment the thing a little bit, you can tell it, you can say walk forward. And you can ever so slightly change the size of it, or you can you can change the lens length here really like quickly. You can see that it's actually gonna like sort of like compress the image a little bit, or uh, or actually stretch it. It's kind of nice. Lens length. And that's kind of a way to like visually look at the length. Otherwise, you can go into the uh, camera properties. If you're just in the viewport, you have nothing selected, and you can actually manually type in what the length is. So I could say. 25, or I could say 45, and that is, of course, going to change things. And then you can zoom in and out. So, if you happen to know any information about the camera, um, that can also that can also help you. But we can use these um, use these things as kind of references to um, to help us understand. You know whether we're getting the right perspective or not. You can see I don't really have that up here because like, I need or probably need a more distorted, distorted lens. Let's see. That might be a true 35 millimeter. I don't know. It's like the bottom needs to be tighter though. Again, I'm looking at those top and bottom lines. Maybe somewhere in there is kind of the sweet spot. I'm looking, I'm looking at this here, and I'm looking at this down there. Might be, might be 35. You can always type it in to get a very exact. Actually, seems pretty good. Okay, so once you've got something that you're rel relatively like happy with, um, you can go ahead and save it. So we've got set view, name views, save as, <clears throat> give it a name. That way, you can always go back and change it. So once you've once you've got something kind of figured out, um, you can test it out. You can kind of fine tune it. So if I go into my objects layer, let's make some red, red for the layer color. You can try to make a box or make make a wall or something that's actually yeah, going from one side of the street to the other. And then give it an extrusion. So let's call it 20 feet. You can sort of see what that looks like from your perspective. And you know that's it's pretty far away. This line doesn't seem to be vanishing quite right, so we might need to um I need to make some adjustments as well. Yeah, actually, I think there's actually more of this building showing on this side than than there is on this side. This is actually in the wrong layer too. Let's go ahead and get that on that object layer. It's always good to test a couple of things. Let's see here. Let's 
can't really depend upon one over the other. Not too bad. Okay. Like I said, it's more kind of an art um, than a science. It's not too bad. If your if your images are bad, you know what? Too this curve is not actually straight, so that's actually it's kind of a bad kind of a bad reference. What I might be looking for is, you know, this this line of the building or 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 something um, something over here. But this side seems to be doing a little bit better. And a trial and error kind of thing. There isn't really, like I said, there's only a science to it. If you mess up a view, you can always go on view, view, change. Undo view change. Never gonna be perfect. <laughs> okay. The more the more visual cues you have in your image, the better the match is gonna be. Now don't don't forget that you're also gonna have to um you know actually clean this stuff up in Photoshop. Like if there's something like for instance this person's head is actually in front of it, all these people, anything that's in the foreground, right, is going to need to be photoshopped out in order to get this thing to be right, so you'd have to actually crop this out. Or you can use this as, as the basis, like use your 3D model as the basis, and then photo collage uh, things, just certain things back in in order to recreate the scene. Um, that can be really helpful. Let's go ahead and add a couple of little things here just to make sure that, like, this is actually looking looking right. So I might, I might do something and actually kind of zooms past my, uh, kind of zooms past my camera here. Actually, that's kind of a clue that I still didn't have it, didn't have it quite right, because um, that was that was too far, that was too far over. That's better. And see, like this over here should be. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's actually. Yeah, so we've got that perspective pretty well matched. Just, you know, you can just kind of check on things. Uh, so it definitely seems to have matched our our perspective here. You just have to be kind of careful about, you know, what it is we're, um, we're making claims about. Uh, but that seems... That seems pretty good. Actually, that's... That's better. So we look at our. If I can kind of move my move my viewpoint up a little bit. A lot of times the camera is like taken at six foot uh, or pretty near to that. Uh, you're not usually taking photographs on a crane or something, for example. So that's kind of a good thing. It's actually not too bad. I mean, we could kind of play this a little bit more. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it, but I do think that that's um, that's kind of getting us somewhere. One thing you can do to kind of check yourself is to actually like try to try to draw like an ellipse where a person's standing in your frame and extrude it to about six feet. So six foot. Oh yeah, and if that 
if that lines up, that six foot cylinder, uh, that tells you that your perspective is right, because that, that pretty much box that guy in. And if I drag that around, you can see that that's actually a person that's like six foot tall. Person back here. I'm not sure if that's working for that person there, but if I drag this behind me, that's pretty darn good. Okay, so so I've I've pretty much got this perspective, uh, you know, like correct. And then if I go into my camera here, I can I can draw some things in here to scale, and they'll they'll generally pop in um, in a way that makes sense here. Another way you can test it is to take another building that you know you know the scale of. So this is 687 uh, feet. Six eight seven. Let's see if that comes in. Yeah, it's a little tall. Angles look right though. So let's kind of play that game. I mean, it's 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 again, it's not exactly um, a perfect method, but uh, you know, if you use those grids to help you kind of line things up, and um, just make sure that you're that you're sort of testing things by extruding uh, some edges in perspective. Try to place some objects of known size, like for example, people. Uh, make sure you're kind of tracking their horizon line. And you should actually be able to get a pretty, a pretty reasonable uh, perspective camera. When you've got your camera figured out, don't forget to save it. Don't forget to go and resave that if you, you don't want to spend a lot of time, like, you know, and then actually lose your camera. All right, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, let us know. But hopefully that'll get you uh, that'll get you started.